Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Victory Cathedral. We will be singing the Mass of Redemption starting with number three on page eight of your missalette. Number three. The scripture readings start on page 46. Our entrance hymn is number 345. All oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Three, four, five. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We begin this new week, we gather around the altar of the Lord Jesus. We are reminded that we are a Eucharistic people, which means that we are called to be a people of thanksgiving. So we join with all of those that, by means of television, are praying with us in this Mass and we lift up our gratitude to God. For our readings today tell us that we must be grateful to God. It's the way in which we can come to know the Lord Jesus, come to know His love, and come to draw closer to Him. But sometimes we see the negative in life. Sometimes we're not always a grateful people. And so we ask our Lord Jesus for pardon and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, in my thoughts and my Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and after us and follow you in love and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept it, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other God except the Lord. The Word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, 
we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The Word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. And he returned to thank Jesus. Thankfulness helps us in our attitude in life. Without an attitude of thankfulness, of gratitude, we can become very negative people. I'm reminded of the man that tried so hard to please his mother-in-law. She sent him for his birthday one day two beautiful sweaters, a yellow and a red one. So he wrote her a thank you note. He even gave her a t phone call to say thank you again. And when she appeared at their door to visit, he had on one of those sweaters, the yellow one. He was so proud and he stood there and he greeted his mother-in-law who always seemed to find something negative, especially about him. And he said, it's so good to see you. You can see how much I'm, I'm enjoying your birthday gift as he wore that yellow sweater. And she looked at him up and down and said, what's the matter, you didn't like the red one? You know, sometimes it can happen to us. We don't mean to. But if we're not careful, negativity can sneak up on us. And after a while, it kind of becomes ingrained within us. And pretty soon, it affects our marriages, our family relationships, our co-workers, things that are going on within us. And so we can become so negative that we fail to understand all the good 
that is in our lives and all the blessings that God brings to us. And in that negativity, we close ourselves off from Jesus Himself, from His healing power. And then so often we feel in the midst of the darkness, we feel abandoned by God. We feel that people just don't understand us, when in fact, it's just that people can't stand to be around us because we bring them down. So instead of bringing the good news of Jesus to others, we seem to bring the bad news of the world to them. When we hear this passage today from St. Luke's Gospel, we hear about ten lepers. We know the story well. They were all healed, Scripture says, but only one returned to give thanks to Jesus because he realized that he had been healed. Now, the other nine couldn't deny the healing physically. Certainly they were. To have leprosy in the day and time of Jesus Christ meant that you were separated. It meant that you wore a bell around your neck, and it meant that when anyone was coming in your vicinity, you had to ring that bell, and you had to holler out, leper. You had to make sure that they knew not to come near you. It meant that they were ostracized. They were shut out from all of society. To be a leper meant you were very much alone. People didn't want to be close to you. They didn't want to be near you. They were afraid. All ten of them were healed physically at, through the love and the power of Christ. But the one that came back, the Samaritan, the foreigner, that fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him, he realized that the healing wasn't just physical. There was a spiritual healing. There was an emotional healing in his life. He recognized that he was once again part of humankind. He was part of the community. He who had been cut off was now brought back into the fold. He was made whole again. In body, mind, and spirit, he was alive. He began to appreciate everything about his life. That's why he had to return to Jesus, to the source of all healing, and say the very simple words, thank you. It changed his life, not just in the physical healing that he received, but in the attitude of how he saw himself again, and how he saw the community, and how he saw his life in the community. He felt that he belonged. He was made whole. When we fail to have a sense of gratitude in our lives, then that's when that neg negativity starts, that negativity that shuns us away from everyone else, and after a while that people don't want to be around us. To have a negative attitude, not appreciating what we have, always focusing on what others have, causes us to fall into that state of jealousy, maybe even envy. All of a sudden, we're comparing ourselves to other people. See what they have? Why does God bless that person? Here I struggle. They seem to have it easy. And so we spend our time comparing ourselves, being jealous of what others have, instead of saying, thank you, God, for what I have and for who I am. Instead of praising God and saying, oh, how we honor you, God, through the blessings that you give to others, and certainly in the blessings that you bring to my life. It really does change us to have a spirit of thankfulness, to have that understanding that every day, can we not find something to thank God for? And when we do, we begin to appreciate things more. Like the leper that returns to thank Jesus, we recognize that we are healed. There's something positive about life. We begin to see each other in different kinds of ways. So instead of picking our spouse apart, we begin to thank our spouse. We begin to say to our husband or our wife, I appreciate what you do. Thank you for that. Maybe just some small token act of kindness. It draws the couple closer together. When children are appreciative of their parents, of what they give them and what they do for them, and parents of their children. When they say the words, thank you, I appreciate you, I'm grateful for that, it opens our hearts more to each other. We begin to recognize that family is a gift. What a wonderful gift from God. We begin to focus on the positive aspects 
of our relationship with our husband and wife, not just the negativity, so that when those tough times come for every marriage as they do, the spouses can support each other. They can get through those tough times because they know that they're partners with each other, because they spend other days that aren't as challenging thanking each other and thanking God for the gift that marriage is. It changes their attitude toward their life together. It changes families. It's that simple, and yet it's that profound. Today's our parish festival, and I'm truly grateful for all the work of so many people that have made this possible. And I've got a lot of my family here today at Mass. My mom and my brother and his wife and my sisters and a nephew and an aunt. And I always tell the story when I think about this passage about thankfulness, of how my mom would make sure that my brother and my sisters and I would always write a thank you note for those that gave us something for our birthdays or for Christmas. And usually my grandparents, of course, did that. And so there would be, after the holiday, a notepad, the stationery, and a pen. You better write that thank you note. And always the address on that envelope that we had to write. You have to be grateful for what people have given you. See, that makes a difference. When we do it in the small things, then we can have enough faith in the large challenges of life to be thankful for God in the same way. We can dare even in faith begin to be grateful to God and thank Him for the tough times, for even the illnesses we go through and the challenges of marriage and the tough times we have with our children and grandchildren and the things that teenagers and young adults go through and the struggles and the questioning of life. All of a sudden, in the midst of those challenges, we say, thank you, God. I don't understand it. I don't know where it's going to lead me. I just know that you're with me. I have faith in you. And as our second reading reminds us, I know that you have faith in me. I know you're not going to abandon me. I'm going to have an attitude of gratefulness, of gratitude. I don't know what you're trying to teach me in the midst of this struggle, in these financial hardships, in these tough times in our relationship. All I know is that I can count on you, God, to stand with me. And in that way, then we don't turn against each other. We don't turn against God. We turn toward God. We turn toward one another. An attitude of thankfulness changes our lives, and I would dare say it can begin to change our world. What if every day we can say with a spirit of true faith, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you for that. Thank you not just for the good things. Thank you for the challenges. Thank you for what you give to me because I know you stand with me through all of it. Then, in that spirit of thankfulness, maybe we wouldn't be such a negative people at times. Maybe we would look not just at what isn't there, but look at what is there. We would look not in our, at our spouse, not as to what's lacking, but what God gives us in our spouse, in our marriage, in our families, in our children. This week, let's take a little time to ask, Can we be really a little bit more negative than we should? Have we allowed that spirit of negativity to kind of overpower us at times? Do we look for the faults of others instead of looking at the gifts that they bring to us? Do do we look at what they don't give us instead of looking at what they do? And do we not allow Christ to truly be our source of healing? Therefore, we have to be thankful to God for that healing that maybe it's not always the way we would like it to be, but we can trust in faith that it is according to God's will, and God knows better than us. Let us be a Eucharistic people, which means a people of thanksgiving, and in that way, change our lives, deepen our faith, and maybe even change the world.
and thankful to the Lord for all he brings to us. We profess what we believe as followers of Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. We seek to be a people of gratitude, knowing that every day we have so much to be grateful for in the love that God shares with us. So lifting our hearts to the Lord, we ask that he answer our prayers. For Pope Francis, as he leads our church in the mission of healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who work in the medical and healing professions, that they may see their vocations as an extension of God's healing touch, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are ill or in need of healing, that they will know God's love for them in a way that cares for their needs, we pray to the Lord. For success of our parish capital campaign, eternally we build, that we may be generous in our time, talent, and treasures, and for God's blessing on our parish picnic today, we pray to the Lord. For our faith community to grow in wholeheartedly gratitude to the Lord for every gift we receive, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed and for parishioners' intentions for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father, we seek to be a people of thanksgiving, a Eucharistic people centered upon the love of your Son, Jesus. Help us to always appreciate the blessings that you share with us each day. And Father, help us through that thankfulness to bring the good news of your Son to all the world. We ask that you answer these prayers through Christ our Lord. The, off the offertory hymn is number 240, Hosea 240.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 209, I am the bread of life, 209.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Again, I thank everyone in the parish that has done so much as we approach our picnic today. So many people from behind the scenes have done so much work over the last several months, and I'm so grateful for them and so much work that will go into today as well. As I said in the homily, it's, it's easy to look at what we don't have or to look upon the negativity, but it takes a lot more effort to really be grateful. It takes a lot more energy to have that kind of attitude. And I think this week, it's important for us to, to ponder upon that. So easily we can quickly say the negative comment, but are we willing to make that extra effort to look at what is good, even in a bad situation? I think that's how we grow in our faith. That's how we grow closer to the Lord. That's why Jesus highlighted that one leper coming back and asked the question, where are the other nine? Were they not all made whole? Were they not all healed? Has no one come but this one foreigner to thank me, to thank God? So in that kind of way, we recognize that Jesus wants us to indeed be a people of thanksgiving. So I'm thankful for you. I thank God for this parish and for your kindness and for your generosity. So let us go about spreading the good news in that kind of way, always with an attitude of gratitude. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our recessional hymn is number 314. Festival Canticle 314. Thank you.